Hello everybody, welcome back to another video and in this video we'll be going over everything that's been added since the fixed in Minecraft Snapshot 23W03A. So this is the very first snapshot of 2023 and it's also the first snapshot for Minecraft 1.19.4 and it also has a few changes for Minecraft 1.20 but it's mainly focused on 1.19.4 and includes lots of new interesting features and small changes, including a new command, which we'll get to later on in this video. And so if you like manga videos like this one, then please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Minecraft 1.94 and 1.20 update videos in the future. And so we'll start with the changes in this snapshot. So first of all, Vexus now use a separate charging animation when they are empty handed. All right, I believe that's more of a bug fix than a change, but sure. And then the second change here is that if you have an armor stand with a custom name, like this one over here, and you place it down in survival mode and then pick it back up, it keeps its custom name. As you can see, it's still called test. There we go. Then there are some accessibility changes as well. So apparently there is an accessibility onboarding screen for players when they launch the game for the first time. Well, I can't really show that because I've launched the game a couple more times than just once. And then apparently they've also added arrow key navigation. As you can see, if I'm in the menu and I press the arrow keys on my keyboard, I can switch through all of the different options and then press enter to go through those different options if I wanted to. This can also be used in the resource pack screen as you can see here, all of that works just fine. Then something I think a lot of players will like a lot. If you go over to controls, there is of course the auto jump and it's now set to off by default. Previously it was set to on and you always had to change it to off if you didn't want it. But now if you want it, you have to go and change it to on yourself. And then there's also a new option in accessibility settings, which is this notification display time. And so this affects the length of time that all notifications stay visible on the screen. And so this is for example, recipes, advancements, subtitles, and all of these different things. So you can set it to be double as fast or even 10 times as slow as usual, which means that if I do, for example, slash advancement grant myself arbalistic like this, it actually stays up for 10 times as long as usual, which I don't know why you would ever want to do that, but there we go. It is nice though that you can make it faster. So we can go into accessibility settings and set this to 0.5. This means if we give ourselves another advancement or void vibration, for example, it's only sh going to show up for a very short period of time and then move away. I think that's quite nice actually. And then there are quite a few technical changes. So first of all, the data pack version is 11. All right. And there's some more technical features, which I don't think are too relevant for most players. You can read through them yourself. I'll leave a link to the patch notes in the description down below. What is interesting though, is that apparently fire can now burn out faster in certain biomes and it's controlled by the increased fire burnout tag. And I think what this means is that if you light a fire in, for example, a plains biome, it will take quite some time to go out. But if you, for example, light a fire in a snowy biome, it will go out faster. And if you light it in a hot biome, it will go out slower. I believe this is what this is referring to. And then we have a couple of changes to already existing commands. So first of all, for the clone commands, you can now also select different dimensions. So you can actually clone a structure from the overworld, the nether or the end, over to where you are right now. So for example, we could clone a structure from the nether, and then you would fill in the nether coordinates. So we'll say, we'll try to clone over a couple of blocks from the nether, see if it works, like this. And then we'll clone them to the overworld and our current coordinates. Press enter. That position is not loaded. That makes sense. So let's actually load this location in the nether. Then what we'll do is we'll force load this area. All right, this chunk should now be loaded. And now let's try to clone that part here. And there we go, we've cloned the part off the nether right over here into the overworld. It is a bit of a hassle because you have to force load the area where you wanna clone it from. But this at least means you can clone your builds from different dimensions into other dimensions. And apparently the data command has been changed a little bit as well. Although it doesn't seem like it's actually been added here. So apparently you should be able to type in slash data string and then either entity block or storage and then go on with the command. But it doesn't seem like that has been implemented yet. I'm also not quite sure what it would do, but let me know what you think that would be. Then there's also a couple of changes to the execute command. So you can now use slash execute either if or unless. And then there's a new type here. So there's actually two new options here. So that's loaded and dimension. And so we can say loaded and then a position of a block. So for example, we could check if a block very far away is loaded. It shouldn't be loaded. 
like this, for example, we'll set it to always active and repeat. And we'll see that it doesn't do anything because that position is not loaded. If we bring it closer to us, the position should be loaded. And there we go. We get a whole bunch of high spamming in the chat. And then the second option we've, they've added here is also dimension, with which you can check if a player is in a certain dimension, for example, by doing execute at, and then for example, a name, if dimension, the end, like this. So this command will run if the player is in the end and then say you are in the end. Of course, it isn't running right now. Let's make sure we force load this so it actually still is there once we are in the end. And I'll quickly go into the end like this. And there we go. Our command will immediately notices we are indeed in the end and start spamming the chat with that. So that's very, very useful. Then you can also use slash execute on. And so you can execute on attacker, controller, leisure, owner, passengers, target, or vehicle. And so attacker means the last entity that damaged the executing entity in the previous five seconds. So you can actually make it such that if a zombie attacks you, you can use this execute command to, for example, automatically kill it by using execute on attacker, run, kill at S. We'll probably have to add an execute as me and then run. There we go. That should be the command, probably. So if a zombie, it attacks me, and it's immediately dead. So yeah, this can be quite useful for map making or whatever. You can use this for attackers, but also, as we saw before, we have, for example, controller, which is an entity that is controlling the executing entity. For example, the first passenger in a boat. There's leisure, which is the entity currently leading the executing entity. There's owner, which is the owner of, for example, a cat, wolf, or a parrot. There's passengers, which concerns the entities that are riding the executing entity. There's target, which is the attack target for the executing entity. So that's the opposite of attacker pretty much. And there's vehicle, the entity that the executing entity is currently riding, which means you could, for example, disable minecarts. For both the title and weather command, you can now use T, S and D suffixes for the durations. So for example, you can use slash weather rain and then put in a number. And afterwards, either put in T for ticks, where 20 ticks go in one second, S for seconds, or D for days. So you can make it rain for a thousand days. That doesn't sound great. Let's clear that. All right, then we move on to the new command, which is actually the right command. And it does exactly what it says. You can target specific entities and make them ride each other. So we can target ourselves and we can mount, for example, the nearest entity that is not a player. And we'll also add a limit of one because we probably can only do this for one and then press enter. And there we go, we're riding a donkey. Okay, that's not that interesting. You could already do that in the game itself. But we could also, for example, go over here and we'll change player to cow so we can ride a cow. Yep. Oh, no, there we go. So it automatically defaults to mobs you can usually already ride, but you can definitely also apply this to a cow, for example. And it doesn't have to be you that's riding. You can also, for example, make cows ride each other by using this command. This should be it, I believe, with all of these different tags. And there we go. We just made a cow ride a cow. And yeah, we can make many of those stacks. Hello guys, are you okay? They're all riding the same cow. We can add more. Now this cow is just holding up 10 of its friends. Now, for example, we could also add, let's say a pig. Up, ah, yeah, there we go. There's a pig on top of there as well. We'll add a bee. There we go. That's just a massive monstrosity. And now we can, for example, also start riding the pig or the bee. And there we go. This is Minecraft right now. And so, so far, this actually seems like quite a difficult command to control, but I think people will get the hang of this quite soon. And so you can also use dismount to make the entities dismount other entities. Then there is also a really interesting new game rule that has been added, which I think is gonna change this game a whole lot, if I understand it correctly, because this game rule is the game rule command modification block limit. Doesn't sound very catchy, but we can see it by default. It is set to 32,768. If you use commands a lot, you'll recognize this number because this is the limit on the amount of blocks you can either clone or fill or use fill biome for. It's been a limit for a very, very long time, but now we can change it ourselves. And so, yes, we can increase the fill and clone block limits using this new game rule. Of course, this does mean that if you don't have a powerful PC, you probably still shouldn't do this, but yeah, you can set it to insane numbers, which means that if I wanted to, I could go over here and then do something like this. Of course, it has to still be within the loaded area, but let's just say we wanted to do this and then fill it with diamond blocks. Enter.
Oh, and there we go. I just filled 1.5 million blocks in one go. Yeah, so this has never been possible in the game. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. That's a lot of diamonds. This also means you could do something like this and then set this. Yep, there we go. All right. Now if we go into spectator mode and just fly down below, we can just remove massive and massive areas of stone super, super easily now. Because of course previously there was like quite strict limit on how many blocks you could remove at one time. But now this has been made a whole lot easier by the expansion of every single one of these commands. It also doesn't seem like it's too laggy here, which is nice. Hey, and there's a beautiful amethyst geode. Nice. Yeah, this is probably one of the best additions in this snapshot. Just look at that diamond block. Then there was also one experimental change in this snapshot. If you activate the data pack, you can now place mob heads on top of node blocks without sneaking. I've already shown this off in a previous video because it got added into Minecraft Pack Edition, but it's now also here in Java Edition. And then there's also a massive list of bug fixes. I've already went through some of these in a previous video, linked to it in the top right of your screen. But you can also read through them in the patch notes linked in the description. And so there we go. That's all the additions, changes, and fixes to Minecraft Snapshot. 23W03A. If you enjoyed this video, then please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Minecraft 1.20 videos in the future. I want to thank my tier 3 member, the Schmickela. Thank you for becoming a tier 3 member. But anyway, there we go. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Hope to see you all in the next one. So till then, bye bye.